think, supporter of Hezbollah, they can bring down Assad without lifting a finger or flying one sortie by letting ISIS do it for them. And so that's why Israel never fired a shot against ISIS. That's why ISIS has not attacked Israel. Can't put two and two together and say, well, wait a minute, come on, that's a stretch. Why? Because you haven't heard from the Jewish National Committee? You mean because the, the Zionist Organization of America hasn't sent out a newsletter saying it? This is one man's opinion. This is how I see it. This is my analysis on the world's chessboard. So now, all of a sudden, just as ISIS is threatening Assad finally to take, take the capital, in comes Putin, and they say, no, you're not taking uh, Syria. You're not going to get control of Syria. We're going to take control of Syria. We're going to destroy you. And guess who their ally is? Russia and Iran are now out to destroy ISIS. You say, how could that be? Why would Iran want to destroy ISIS? Because Iran is primarily a Shiite nation. ISIS is primarily Sunnis, remnants of the old guard of Saddam Hussein's Iraq. Old enemies going back 800 or 1,000 years. So you've got Russia and Iran now allied to take down ISIS. The United States is in a quandary because it's allegedly going, doesn't know which side to be on. It pretended it was against ISIS, but now it has to join Russia and Iran in taking down ISIS? They don't know what to do. The sorority never encountered anything like this at, at Harvard. They didn't teach them this at Bryn Mawr. They didn't teach them this at Princeton. They didn't teach them this in women's studies. They didn't teach them this at Georgetown or any of the other denizens of lower living. So the sorority does not know what to do. They've been put into a box. But make no mistake about it, Russia is there. They're rebuilding a naval base. They flew in fighter jets. We are not going to fight Russia for two reasons. One, because Obama doesn't have the will. Two, because the army would lose. Our army today would lose in a war against Russia. That's how much he has decimated our U.S. military. There are only so many people that you can destroy in a military and still have, fun still have a functioning military. Now, this has been a very long segment on Lenin's Pope and my analysis of the situation in Syria. I realize it's an awful lot for a Monday, but what's the difference if it's Monday or Wednesday or Tuesday or Friday? What's the difference if it's September, October, November, or December? Either you have an analysis that's worth speaking about and people like what you say or they don't like what you say. But you have to say it. We are living in the most dangerous times in modern American history with an absolute, raging, out of control, power mad maniac in the White House who goes from 10,000 to 100,000 to 200,000 uh, Muslims in a two day period because there's no opposition. Tell me who is posing a greater threat to America Vladimir Putin or Barack Obama? This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So the media is attacking Donald Trump for asking, not saying anything about his Obama, a Muslim, to a staged caller. Well, I don't know why that's an illegitimate question. It's, his middle name is Hussein, and he doesn't seem to uh, be too American in his belief systems. But as I've said before, it uh, doesn't matter whether he is a practicing Muslim or not. The issue is, what is his e ideology? The ideology is certainly not capitalism, nor is it American. He is dedicated to subverting Western, white, European, Judeo-Christian democracy. Or shall I say democracies? And the greatest forces opposing Western, Judeo, Christian, particularly white democracies are radical Islam and radical Catholicism in their current manifestations. In other words, the new Marxism, the new emerging Soviet Union of the world. And what's ironic here is one of the greatest opponents of the emerging world USSR is Russia. Russia is the last egg that they can't seem to break to create this new dictatorship, this world dictatorship centered uh, in Brussels. One man's opinion, the savage nation. Yeah, one man's opinion. Am I allowed to express it or shall you get outraged? Join the savage nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. <laughs> Thank you. 
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. You have radicals that are doing things. I mean, it wasn't people from Sweden that blew up the World Trade Center. You have extremist Muslims that are in a class by themselves. I mean, they are, it is a problem in this country, and it's a problem throughout the world. Blue Monday. Obama, 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 no, 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 it's Trump, 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 the Charlemagne of our time, welcome to the Savage Nation. He's actually not a reincarnation of anyone, and the reason he is hated by the communist Marxist drug addicts in the media is obvious. He's saying everything that needs to be said ideas that were long suppressed, ideas you've only heard on radio shows like mine, or read on blogs, or on certain great websites. Finally, we have someone speaking for we the people. We are the majority. Make no mistake about it, we are the majority. It's not the drug addicts uh, at the at the Emmys Awards. It's not the, the children who went to uh, the high school of performing art who are drug addicts but very talented little robots. The little puppets of Hollywood are certainly not known for their thinking, are they? They're known for using drugs and abusing themselves and winding up in rehab. So they have a thing called the Emmys last night, the lowest attendance in history. And some moron they gave an Emmy to right away attacks Trump as a racist. Oh, how exciting. What she learned that? Well, what course did she learn that in? Who taught it to her? Was it uh, Geffen, Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg? Was it one of the stooges at CAA who said, here's what you got to say? Who wrote the script for her? Right away, racist. Anyone says one word that, that veers out of the party line, Mao Zedong, anyone? Out of the party line? Communism, anyone? Anyone who dares speak outside the party line? Communism, Marxism, Leninism, anyone? You get it? Now you understand what you mean by political correctness and why Trump is resonating. Because we, the people, know that we have one last shot to save the country, and it's him. The rest of them don't even matter. Although, I would vote for any Republican except Rubio uh, over any Democrat. Rubio is a, a, oh God, don't get me started. But let's not go into that. Rubio's not the, excuse me, the problem. Nor is he the solution. If you just tuned in, you missed a great hour. My opening Monday was good. It took me a little while to get where I wanted to go, but I explained to you who the Jesuit is in uh, the Vatican. I explained to you who the retrovirus is in the White House. I explained to you what's going on in the world, and I explained it in ways that you haven't heard it before in original language quoting from my great forthcoming book called Government Zero, which is only available right now on Amazon or bondsandnormal.com. It should be out in a month. And I implore all Catholics who are thinking people to buy the book just for the po uh, chapter on Lenin's Pope. Maybe, just maybe, you can save one Catholic from being sucked down into the vortex uh, that this Pope is pulling the whole church. How's that for a little a lingo? You like that? The vortex? Yeah, Vortex, 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 Wichita Sutra. Vortex, Wichita Sutra. Vortex, Roma Sutra. Vortex, Roma Sutra. Anyway, Pope Francis doesn't understand how to alleviate poverty. George Will, who, was who had ceased being relevant in 1991, suddenly came back with blazing guns and wrote one of the most brilliant analysis of Pope Francis's communism Marxism, Leninism, whatever you want to call it. In the most succinct article ever by George Will since 1991 finally appeared. I know the guy saved himself with this in the National Review. And I know you can read it for yourself. And I won't quote the whole article, but some of it is, is worth reading. And people occasionally, he goes on to uh, Francis, who I affectionately call the bouncer because he was not, see, he was not born divinely. Francis is actually a man, whether you know it or not. I know many of you don't know that. But Pope Francis was actually born of a woman. He was not divinely created somewhere in heaven and then put into the Vatican. He was born of a mother and a father. But he doesn't even understand that the communism that he grew up in, in, in his native Argentina, would actually devastate the poor on whose behalf he pretends to speak. 
And uh, George Will says it best. Some of his woolly sentiments that have the intellectual tone of fortune cookies are these, such as people occasionally forgive, but nature never does. And George Will writes, the Vatican's majesty does not disguise the vacuity of this. Is Francis intimating that environmental damage is irreversible? He neglects what technology has accomplished regarding London's air. And then he says, the earth is becoming an immense pile of filth. Hyperbole is a predictable precursor of yet another UN climate change conference, the 21st since 1995. Fortunately, Will writes, rhetorical exhibitionism increases as its effectiveness diminishes. And he goes on to what Francis has to say attacking uh, air conditioning. And he says, the church that thought it was settled science that Galileo was heretical should be attentive to all evidence. <laughs> That's a hell of a line. Jerry Brown should pay careful attention to that since he himself is a fellow Jesuit. Did you? Oh, you didn't know that? You didn't know that Jerry Brown and the Pope practiced the same uh, uh, economics? The church that thought it was settled science that Galileo was heretical should be attentive to all evidence. And then he attacks excessive uh, compulsive consumption and talks about air conditioning, which is a sin. And that's why he jets around in his air-conditioned jet and praises subsistence farming while noshing on a, probably a, a lasagna somewhere in the air. He said, it's a romance best enjoyed from 30,000 feet above the realities that such farmers yearn to escape. And he goes on. And the most important part of this thing about uh, the bouncer from Rome is Francis's Argentina where uh, Argentina once had, once had the 14th highest per capita GDP. It's now 63rd as a result of Francis's agenda for the planet. In other words, the same agenda of redistributing wealth that they've been practicing in the country in which he grew up, when he liked to do it to the world, will bring the GDP down to uh, uh, around the world. And he says, as the world spurns his church's teachings about abortion, contraception, divorce, homosexual marriage and other matters, Francis generally makes his church congruent with the secular religion of sustainability. It's pretty well written, and it's beautiful. He stands against modernity, rationality, science, and ultimately the spontaneous creativity of open societies in which people and their desires are not problems but precious resources. Americans cannot simultaneously honor him and celebrate the nation's premises. Beautifully put, George Will, congratulations. Not that he cares, of course. He's so above me that it wouldn't matter whether Michael Savage praised him. He's way above all of us, you see. I also talked about Syria and Russia, which I'm not going to repeat myself again, but I'll take some calls now. And before we do, here's a few other stories that I didn't get to. New York Times of all places published this, which was shocking. U.S. soldiers told to ignore Afghan allies' rape of boys. At night, we hear them screaming, but we're not allowed to do anything about it. Oh, really? Our Afghan allies rape young boys as part of their culture? Yeah. So when U.S. soldiers try to stop them, they were threatened with court-martial by the useless idiots in the Pentagon. <laughs> useless well, Pentagon. Could you imagine what it's become? It's more like a pentagram rather than a pentagon. Under Barack Obama, the pentagon has become a, become a pentagram. In his last phone call home, Lance Corporal Gregory Buckley Jr. told his father what was troubling him. From his bunk in southern Afghanistan, he could hear Afghan police officers sexually abusing boys they had brought, in, brought to the base. At night, we can hear them screaming, but we're not allowed to do anything about it, the Marine's father. George Buckley Sr. recalled his son telling him before he was shot to death at the base in 2012. Really? You mean his uh, commanding officers let him be fracked because he was reporting on homosexual rape? Hmm. He urged his son to tell his superiors. My son said that his officers told him to look the other way because it's their culture. Well, maybe the whole culture of the army soon, given Obama's uh, recent appointment. Rampant sexual abuse of children has long been a problem in Afghanistan, particularly among armed commanders who dominate much of the rural landscape and can bully the population. The practice is called Baka Bazi, literally boy play. And American soldiers and Marines have been instructed not to intervene. In some cases, not even when their Afghan allies have abused boys on U.S. military bases, according to interviews and court records. So there's Obama's new army. Just let the 